Hey there! Thank you for joining our first DIY Robocars live stream. <laughs> we hope you enjoy your stay. I'm Cara Grant, a student at the NWU Potrop Stream and a student worker slash intern at Counterpoint Dynamics. Counterpoint Dynamics is a consulting firm based in Johannesburg, specializing in quantitative analysis, machine learning and other IT and engineering solutions to financial problems. In today's video, we will be talking about the DIY Robocars self-driving community. DIY self-driving cars themselves, as well as details on how you can get involved. Sounds exciting, eh? We will be tackling all the following topics. Some of the mechanisms behind and links between machine learning and self-driving. Specifically, we will be going over what convolutional neural networks are and how they work. And we will also talk about the donkey car, the star of our show. We will also be going over how to build one, how it works on the inside and how to get working with it even if you can't get your hands on the parts themselves. We will also be chatting about the DIY Rubber Cars community and how you can get moving in that area, as well as ways to get in contact with us. Also, stick around for the end of the video. We have a few plans to require your involvement, so stay tuned to find out how you can help. So, what is machine learning? I'm going to give a pretty basic definition and a very sparse overview in this next section. However, don't worry, there are plenty of links in the description for those who want to go deeper into this concept. Essentially, what you can take away from machine learning as a concept is this, where traditional programming is jamming together a bunch of inputs and writing the rules to get the desired output, machine learning is a process of presenting a machine with your inputs and desired outputs and have it come up with the rules to find the outputs that you want. It sounds a whole lot more spooky than it actually is. And if you listen to Elon Musk, you might as well be summoning a demon. But don't worry, matrix multiplication is not summoning a demon. In order for machine learning to take place, we're going to need three basic things. We're going to need our data, as well as our expected outputs or labels. We are going to need a rules of engagement or ways to make sure that we are actually learning or a means to learn with. And we're also going to need a checking mechanism, a means to know whether or not we're actually learning or making progress. Here's a basic structure of a neural network. We've got our neurons and we've got our connections. And on the inside, we're going to have our data, receptors or tensors, our weights and our biases. So let's zoom in on one of these neurons. Here's a basic neuron. Before we can do anything, a neuron needs to be able to receive data. So this data structure with which it receives its data is called a tensor. This is essentially an empty matrix of expected size that is able to receive inputs from either outside data sources or neurons that are connected to it. If it is connected to other neurons, it's going to have a weight matrix. A weight matrix consists of, well, the things that are going to change when the neural network is trained. Then, at the end, we've got biases. Biases are optional, but they also assist in the neural network learning process. These are the values that are attached to each and every connection to another neuron. And as the network is change, trained, it is going to assign different weights to the inputs from different neurons, which allows it to make decisions. However, this is a very limited probability space, so we need a way to make this non-linear or add different ways that it can solve the problem. To this purpose, we've got a wide variety of activation functions, which helps us to non-linearize the outputs of our dot product operation with our weights and our inputs, which essentially is the brains and the operations behind every single neural network. Each and every neuron in this network has got this mechanism. So now going back to the main neural network structure, we now have our different layers that we can define. We've got our input layer, which take inputs from outside data, and they've got sensors of fixed size. So you know which data you're going to expect and what you're going to do with it. Our next layer is our hidden layer. It's not really hidden in so much as it's just behind the input layer. This is where most of the magic happens. So while the input layers do not have any weights and biases attached to them, they just take inputs, so they just consist of input tensors, the hidden layer ha now has weights and biases and also an activation function. So an activation function is applied to the output of an entire layer. This is our output layer which provides our outputs. The output also needs to be passed through its own activation in order to ensure it has the behavior that you would like it to have. So there, the output layer has its own activation layer. This basically completes the whole forward propagation process, which is where a neural network passes through data and makes a prediction in it the first time. After it has made its first pass on predictions, it needs to learn what it's done. So. We're going to take the outputs of the network to be y, the desired output to be z, 
And then we have an error function or a cost function, which measures how well we did in comparison with the expected output. This value is then back propagated through the network, which means that the weights and biases are updated according to the error function. So now once we have gone through the neural network once, we now take the error and apply it to each and every one of the weights and biases in the network and update them according to how we want the network to learn. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how a neural network learns in basic terms. The basic concept of an ANN or artificial neural network is pretty useful in the self-driving car problem. These artificial neural networks can come in many different architectures, including convolutional neural networks for image-based processing and also recurrent neural networks, which takes into account time and history. These neural network architectures, when used in conjunction with computer vision, which also heavily overlaps with machine learning, provides a very solid basis for a solution in an autonomous car. This is because to drive you need two basic things. You need your vision and decision-making power. The vehicle is able to take in and analyze the features in the world around it and then make decisions based on these features. The way in which these features and decisions are learned can be found in a wide variety of training mechanisms. However, for the scope of this video and for the donkey car, we'll be talking about behavioral cloning. So what is behavioral cloning? In our context and in simple terms, behavioral cloning illustrated by an example would be this. We would drive our donkey car several laps around the track, collecting images and other relevant data, such as signals that are sent to the driving and control motors of the vehicle. This will serve as our data labels. These images and data labels are then shown to a neural network, which learns to pick apart features in these images and link them to decisions, or the data labels. We then show these images and their data labels, or the signal, or the driving signals, to a neural network, which learns how to pick apart the features in these images and make decisions based on the features picked apart, which would be which driving signal to send to the rest of the car. Once we have shown these images and data to the neural network and trained it via the method that we described earlier, this network is now able to take images and make decisions based on these images, essentially imitating your driving behavior when you collected the data in the first place. This, in a simple example, would be behavioral cloning, which is the center point or the crux of the donkey car self-driving system. In order to explain a convolutional neural network, I'll be switching over to this convolutional neural network visualization tool. So it's basically going to show you what's happening in each of the layers. So we've got two convolutional layers over here, which will be um, extracting images by multiplying each input image to a layer with a certain filter with learned weights and biases to um, highlight certain types of features and then each convolutional layer will be followed with a pooling layer which condenses the image to its most important pixels. After it's passed through its last pooling layer it will go be flattened into a densely connected layer which will help make a statistical prediction as to which number it is. So these are all concepts that um, have got a lot of depth behind them and will take a long time to go into detail about but here's a basic illustration of what the inside of a neural network or a convolutional neural network what it looks like. So let's detect a 5. So we are going to be drawing our first input number here. It's already starting to guess it's a 5 and it's a 5. So if we look at this input image over here, um, it's being convolved by different filters. So each one of these feature maps corresponds to a different filter and each one of these pixels has been convolved out of the image by the filter. So in the first layer you see it detects a lot of outlines, heat maps, where it is in the image, stuff like that. And in the pooling layer these features are condensed into their most important parts. Then after these features have been condensed, they're once again feature detected by the next convolutional layer and then these are then condensed again. After they've been condensed a second time, once again these this pattern of convolutional layer, pooling layer, convolutional layer and pooling layer can repeat into infinity how many times you want. Um, is then flattened so that it can be fed into a densely connected layer so that we can actually make a prediction based off this thing. So we've got a single densely connected layer over here that's processing the flattened images over here and that is then fed to an output layer which makes a statistical prediction about which number is most likely to be based on the representations taken from the features that have been extracted down to the most basic part that you can get. So um, we have detected a 5. So its first guess is a 5. It says it is, it is a statistical probability. Its second guess is a 3. So let's see if we can guess a 3. 
it's hoping. So there we go. We have guessed a three and a second guess is a one. And we can see the same effect happening with a seven. First guess is a seven, second guess is a four. Let's see what happens with number four. And there it tends to break a bit. I think four has been abused. But once again, this is an open site that people keep playing with. So I think this thing has seen four so many times it started to warp its understanding of how this is. So um, once again, these networks are not perfect, but this gives a pretty good indication or explanation about how to visualize what actually happens on the inside of the layers of a convolutional neural network. So how does the donkey car consolidate neural networks, behavioral cloning and autonomous driving? And more importantly, what is the donkey car? The donkey car is an open source self-driving Python library. This library can be installed on a laptop, the Raspberry Pi or a Jetson Nano. It consists of several control scripts necessary to take in an image from a camera, process this image, and then output PWM signals to their motors of a remote control car in response. Here we have a physical example of a standard 110th scale hobby remote control car. The steering is controlled via a servo motor and the car itself is propelled with a brushed DC motor. These two motors are controlled by this electronic speed controller, which would normally receive its commands or PWM signals from this radio receiver and your remote control. However, the radio receiver and remote control are completely replaced by this setup. So this setup consists of a Raspberry Pi, which receives signals over Wi-Fi from your control laptop, which could either be driving signals or a command to use an onboard pilot. The server hat, which interprets predictions from the pilot or signals from the laptop to the ESC. And then we have our front facing camera, which takes photos and sends them into the donkey car, either to be saved for later use or directly to the CNN to be interpreted by the pilot. So what is the autonomous pilot made of? Well, it consists mainly of three parts. It has the image receiver, the neural network, or our main pilot, and the signal transmitter. So what the image receiver does is it takes all of the images that are taken by the front-facing camera and transports it directly to the CNN or the convolutional neural network, which is part of the main pilot, or it saves it for later training. In the case that it transports it to the CNN, the neural network will then extract features from the images, as we saw in the CNN example, and then condense these features and make decisions based on them. These decisions can come in the realm of percentage that it's percentage likelihood that it's turning left, percentage likelihood that it's turning right, the percentage that it would be turning right based on likelihoods or something like that. It, it all depends on how the network is set up. Then, these likelihoods and predictions are transported to the signal transmitter, which interprets these predictions into understandable signals that the server hat can then output as PWM signals to the control motors of the car, finally making the car drive. But what if I don't have access to a physical car, or I'm too impatient for my battery to finish charging before I start driving the car around again? Can I still get involved with the donkey car in the first place? Can I still contribute? The good news is yes. Yes, you can. The donkey car has its very own donkey gym simulator. When used in a Linux system, this simulator seamlessly replaces a real-world workflow that would typically be used to drive, train, and deploy a physical donkey car. If, on the other hand, what you want is simply to drive around more and collect more data, the window-based donkey sim should be just fine. The Donkey Gym simulator functions as a full hardware replacement, meaning that the laptop-based control cannot tell the difference between the simulated car and the physical one. You would connect to it the same as you would a physical car, start it up the same, and drive it through the provided web controller just the same, meaning that your own pilots can be developed, trained, and deployed fully virtually, or you can train and play around with the default pilot without ever needing to leave your room. So, how would you get started? A great place to get started is to follow the tutorials up on the Donkey Car Doc site, linked in the description. You can opt to follow the path to a Donkey Gym implementation, a physical car, or both. If you want to build a physical car, be sure to check out the Brontosaur blog, which has details on pricing and obtainability of some of the parts in South Africa. This is also linked in the description. You're also more than welcome to get involved in the community of hundreds of DIY Robocars members worldwide. Their Slack channel is chock full of people with ideas and things to read, and everyone is willing to answer and ask questions. We are also starting our own offshoots of this community specifically for South African participants. Our Discord server is only just starting out, but be sure to join and help the conversation gain some traction. The link to the official DIY Robocars Slack channel and the invite for our Discord server are both, once again, in the description. 
We are very excited for what could be coming next and we would love to see students, hobbyists, lecturers and all sorts of people getting involved in making a self-driving car of their own. We were planning many different events this year, including a physical race to be possibly hosted at the NWU. However, due to current events, a traditional meetup may be ill-advised for a long time. But there is still good news. We still want to get you involved, even if it is virtually. So please fill in our Google form linked in the description so that we can see what sort of expectation and interest we could cater for. And join in the official DIY Robocar Slack and our own Discord server to keep the conversation going. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful and that we get to see you or hear from you very soon.